US Speaker Nancy Pelosi's Taiwan visit has gripped world politics and caused a massive tectonic shift in the Indo-Pacific and ASEAN forums. In a wolf warrior mode, China is carrying out military drills in the air and sea around Taiwan in the wake of Pelosi's visit to the self-ruled island despite international calls to calm the tensions. Yes, you see that Chinese made their strikes, uh, probably using our visit as an excuse. Let me close by saying this. The Chinese have tried to isolate Taiwan. They may try to keep Taiwan from visiting or participating in other places, but they will not isolate Taiwan by preventing us to travel there. Back in the past, Russia's invasion of Ukraine had already sparked an avalanche of discussion about the implications for Taiwan. And now, with Beijing stepping up its military clout in the Indo-Pacific, will Taiwan be able to defend the geopolitical challenge? And will it be able to stop China, who is way too powerful to engage with in a conflict on equal terms from a military incursion into the island? If we revisit history and a series of threats in the past two years, China has stepped up its military presence near the self-governing island of Taiwan. Even after claiming full sovereignty of Taiwan, Beijing has been threatening to invade the island for over seven decades. While ominous headlines that China will attack Taiwan have been circulating for some time, the self-governing island has been preparing for a possible conflict with Beijing for a long time. According to Taipei, the strategy has shifted to deter China in terms of human and political costs, making the war a loss for China. Though China is overwhelmingly superior, both in arms and personnel, Taiwan is confident that it can make the invasion as difficult and prolonged as possible. But the question arises, how will Taipei defend itself against China? The answer is the porcupine strategy, also known as the asymmetrical warfare. Proposed in 2008 by U.S. Naval War College research professor William S. Murray, the porcupine strategy aims to make the invasion very difficult and costly for the enemy, and for Taiwan, that is China's military might. The strategy focuses on fortifying a weak state's defences to exploit the enemy's weaknesses, rather than taking on its strengths. The idea, according to the Quadrennial Defence Review 2021, is to resist the enemy on the opposite shore, attack it at sea, destroy it in the littoral area and annihilate it on the beachhead. Another strategic question that arises is, Taiwan's territory includes a chain of islands and some of them are near Chinese shores. So how will the porcupine doctrine save Taiwan? In a nutshell, Taiwan's porcupine doctrine has three defensive layers. The outer layer is about intelligence and reconnaissance to ensure defense forces are fully prepared. Behind this come plans for guerrilla warfare at sea with aerial support from sophisticated aircraft provided by the US. The innermost layer relies on the geography and demography of the island. The ultimate objective of this doctrine is surviving and assimilating an aerial offensive well enough to organize a wall of fire that will prevent the Chinese People's Liberation Army from successfully invading. Though the entire plan seems to be well arranged, the major roadblocks are budget and few conventional weapon systems. The United States needs to provide explicit security guarantee and weapons to Taiwan to win the porcupine game. Though in 2022, the US has approved a possible $100 million sale of equipment and services to Taiwan, China still has a strong military power as it spends 25 times more on its army than Taiwan. However, if Taiwan adopts the porcupine plan, 
it could increase the risk that an invasion attempt would fail or be substantially delayed either in the water or on the island. As per experts, the flee and hide strategy will somehow shake the morale of Taiwan and for Beijing, the stakes aren't as high as Taipei. Also, not to forget, China can overwhelm Taiwan's defenses with cyber attacks, missile strikes and blockade capabilities. However, repeating a previous statement in the face of China's continued military expansion, Washington has been the biggest backer of Taiwan. To summarize the US-China-Taiwan triangle, Taiwan is more important to US interests and Beijing has more to lose economically. So once the dust of threats and provocations settles, only time will tell who wins the fight without fighting.